We live in a time where the flow of information is constant, with competing voices in crowded spaces, where old school thoughts meet new school ideas. We are constantly having to recreate ourselves. To understand these identities, we need to decipher the culture. This is unconventional. This, this is, is Lounge Academics. Academics. How's everyone doing? How are you feeling? What's going on, Nisha? Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I, I, heard good you bop, I saw you bopping away to music and I was wondering what you were listening to because I couldn't hear. You couldn't hear anything? Yeah, my own little beats. A little Mission Impossible. Do you remember them old school beats from Mission Impossible? You know the theme tune? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was right. listening to. Because it, it fits very well for what we're going to do. Do you know what I mean? Look at your face. You look petrified. You're like, what is this guy going to get me to do? Do you know what? Because I've, see, I've seen your interviews before and sometimes you can be a little bit random. So I, random. I am literally like, what is Kevin going to ask me today? That... You're in good hands. You're in good hands. But everyone, I just want you to um, say hey to me. Show them love. Do you know what I mean? Wave, you know, put some fists, do whatever you need to, to um, communicate the love. Do you know what I mean? This evening, yeah, Pa, it's, it's very much needed right now. So for those of you who, um, I guess, haven't been, like, I guess, in touch with us in terms of the whole COVID lockdown and the restrictions and everything that's been happening, obviously, because of social distancing, we haven't been able to effectively do our normal interviews as we do in studio. So we thought, to kill some time, to keep people connected, we thought what we'll do is why not do a little live stream and keep our guests kind of engaged because there's a lot of people that want to jump on the platform, they want to come on, but haven't had the opportunity to. So we thought this is a great way to, to have engagement, right? So what we're going to do in terms of our actual run-ins for this evening, these are going to be short, very sharp interviews that we're going to be doing with... Um, future guests we're going to do this weekly so we'll get people on and it's an opportunity for people to learn more about your brand learn more about what you're doing learn more about your passions and your creativity so it's called five minutes to disrupt and simply each week we're going to get a new guest someone's going to come on and they've got five minutes to kind of share their innovation and then we're going to go straight into um, an interview to find out a little bit more about them and obviously this week we've got nisha Yes, hello. You know what I mean, hello. So Nisha, right? You know Nisha yes. is a, those of you that seen the, um, our story and seen a little bit of the publicity that we've had out there, Nisha's a coach, right? Personal development coach, NLP, might I add. That's yeah. Neuro Linguistic Programming, right? Programming, correct, yeah. Check you out, man. I must say you look very nice this evening, Nisha. Thank Skin you, tea. Kevin. Yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. So what we're going to do, right? And um, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to kick into our kind of five minutes, right? Now, Nisha, I just want to check with you. Did you have any hidden talents or anything that you disclosed earlier on that you might have? Did no, you, did I, you... didn't. I didn't. I didn't, didn't actually. Didn't. I thought fine. that was That's really interesting. interesting because it made me have to think and I was thinking, what hidden talents do I have? But actually, yeah. unfortunately, I, I don't have any really to share I'm with you. None that I can put on this... Um, this platform anyway yeah yeah well then what we're going to do we're going to do something slightly different then we're going to have a oh, quick time here we go, don't worry. you're going to be good you're going to be good don't worry it's all good you're going to be well yeah uh, i'm seeing all the love hearts everyone's showing love for this hey yes what's happening you all right okay so this is what we're going to do right so i'm going to count you in and then what we're going to do is we're going to kick into your five minutes yeah and i'm going to count you in from five four three two one. Was that my countdown? Yeah, go for it, Nish. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> explaining to me what you were yeah, going to do yeah. and then you were going to count down. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, for those yeah. of you that have joined us, my name is Nisha Taylor. I'm a personal development coach, NLP coach. Um, primarily, my clients that I work with are business startups, for um, community interest business and also as this show is called Disrupt, I help people to disrupt their sabotaging in our beliefs in, in order for them to be able to find their purpose and achieve the desires that they want to achieve. So yes, 
Okay. Oh, is there more for me to say? Yeah, okay, the reason why, how did yeah, I become yeah. a coach? Um, I'm going to keep it real with you. I started um, a journey maybe five years ago of fully self-discovering myself. I was at a point in my life where I was searching for something more deeper and more meaningful. I had achieved a lot, but I still knew that there was more inside me. Um, I've had many, my life has been disrupted a couple of times. So I feel like I've had to start my life over. Um, and because of that, um, I found my passion, but it, it had always been there. But through personal development, it rebirthed in terms of me being able to help people that have sometimes been through some of the challenges um, from past, whether it's trauma, um, life experiences that have caused us to change the narrative about ourselves and stop us from actually progressing and achieving the things that we want to achieve. Because business and life is one thing but when you dig deeper into some of your barriers it opens up a whole another realm of things that sometimes we have to deal with in order to push through life um successfully okay okay wow 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 so a lot of learned kind of personal experience there has kind of led you to go into coaching and to do what you're doing is that correct yeah yeah it's life experiences but it's also mm -hmm. um being able to break the unwanted thoughts and you know like sometimes we have these internal dialogues that we're not aware of and yeah. I find that a lot with um, my clients sometimes you've got a lot of internal dialogues that you don't even realize are sabotaging your growth and I remember I'll give you a story when I started um I had a mentor like some years ago and I remember speaking to him and as an NLP coach what you do is you pick up on language a lot so you can speak to somebody and you hear the thoughts and how they think about themselves just in general terms of conversations. And I remember saying to him, you know, I'm positive. I don't need a mentor. Um, my life is good. And um, he literally challenged me. He was like, gave me an elastic band and I put it around my hand and he said, every time you think something negative about yourself, just ping the elastic band. And so I wore it. And Actually, it was the first time I had a real awareness of just how much sabotaging thoughts I have. So every minute I was pinging this elastic band and I was like, okay. oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. actually I have more overwhelmingly um, questionable thoughts than I do have in terms of um, self-belief and, you know, believing in my power, believing in my ability and, and all those types of things, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, I also think that, you know, as a, I used to think that from being in a nine to five to being my own boss would be the same type of mindset. So yeah. from being in a nine to five job, like being able to hit targets and get goals and be really successful to push the organization forward, those transferable skills that come over into coaching, somehow you don't realize that there's a lot more self-belief that needs to be fired up in terms of running your own brand, being the face of your brand and making hard decisions for your business and really pushing your business forward. Like you become the face and everything for that driving force, you know? And um, so it caused me to challenge a lot of transitions from being in one place in my life to then being my own boss and helping people to discover their own journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how, how do you apply that to helping other people to find their own journey? So I get the journey for yourself and how you've transitioned, but how has that helped you to kind of effectively make you, uh, I guess, a better coach? Well, what, what it's helped me to do with my clients, I help them to um, become authentic. Now, yeah. I think that sometimes growing up, you're installed with a lot of belief systems that are not necessarily your own you follow paths that don't exactly fire you up or inspire you. And you kind yeah. of fit into a mold of other people's idea about you. And because of that, you can't always, um, you don't always have the confidence to be who you truly are for the fear that you're going to upset other people. Or you won't fit somebody else's ideal of what they believe you to be. So the best way that I work with my clients is first to, for them to understand their authenticity, understand who they are, what are your desires. And if there is any blockages, where does that come from? Is that from an experience? Is that from something traumatic that's happened? Or is it not even factual? Is it just a thing that you're telling yourself? 
but yeah, actually you've yeah. got no evidence for it and you absolutely can do the thing that you're telling yourself you can't so there's different layers to um coaching but primarily it really is about allowing people to be authentic and find who they are from deeper in so that they can exist in a place of um standing in their own power understanding yeah. who they are finding yeah. value in their decision making because um there's also another thing that happens is when we make decisions we always need to get it co-signed by somebody else you know um say a bit more about that what do you mean when you say to get it co-signed by someone else um, so you so you might you might inherently know your answer but because you yeah. don't have that confidence to believe in your ability to make decisions you go and ask external people to co-sign sometimes a vision that god has given you or sometimes something that you want to do you get it co-signed and the problem with that is that you're seeking external validation all the time and don't get me wrong it's okay to get advice but when you're seeking validation to the point where you don't trust yourself and it's all about whether someone says yes or someone says no you then have to check your internal dialogue and think actually why is it that i can't trust myself to make a decision for myself and sometimes wow. that's a challenge wow. yeah wow 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 so hold on so you're saying why wow but i guess that takes a lot of um introspection right you got to be able to kind of look within because some people and i'm sure because some people have just been like hey true true i'm relating to that a lot of people are hearing you and they're like yeah i know that I, i've connected with that i've seen it myself so can preach me yeah this then so obviously yes bro yeah yeah i know who that is so obviously on that note right people are relating to what's been said right now but i guess for you how do you do that though because i guess to be a coach and to be able to help people to think about that stuff i guess first people have to recognize that there is something they need to resolve or or sort out first would there be some yeah so there? so here's yeah. the thing with life okay you have two types yeah. of um people you've got people that are self seeking like they want to find themselves more to be able to overcome some challenges and then you've got other people that more are based on excuses and say pointing the finger outwardly to say i'm like this because of that or that person has caused me to be this way so my first thing is when i do an intake with a client it's about me understanding whether they're ready to open up because looking at yourself isn't that easy you know yeah 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 when of course you're pointing your the finger at yourself and trying to sort your own internal dialogue out and trying to figure out what is it about me that influences certain situations what is it about me that sometimes can be a contributor to certain situations yeah. it's sometimes hard for you to look at yourself because it's very easy to point the finger at somebody else and say i'm like this or i'm responding because of that but i always think that you can only hold on to your own power if somebody else is um something something that somebody else does to you you don't respond based on what they're doing but you respond on how you want to respond basically so that makes sense to respond as opposed to a reaction so to speak right. yeah yeah right. so you're kind of responding so you take it's it's developing that agency is having that agency and effectively having that power to be able to kind of respond yeah yeah and it's just holding on to your own because it's like um so say for instance when people say you made me mad you made mm. me angry when you look at it on a deeper level no i chose to allow you to make me angry because i didn't yeah, have to yeah. respond in anger yeah you so see? you have so, where you yeah you have the power to be able to to make those decisions because when you and that's funny let me i just want to amplify this for people it's interesting when we look at our behaviors yeah it's funny um you know a lot of people often will go that you made me do this and you hear this a lot especially when you look at and i don't want to go too heavy and too deep but situations like dv domestic violence or abuse and stuff like that where you know you're hearing people saying that you made me do this to you or whatever when those behaviors are not called for particularly when there's that kind of power imbalance between people do you know what i mean so i totally hear it you have power 
in circumstances and you've got the power of choice and i think yeah, yeah. I just and i think that, i think you just pulled up on a good point people that have experience like dv and, and different elements of abuse as well i i strongly believe that um those experiences can also affect you so you know there's two types of things people say be positive and you know you can go for your dreams and go for what you want that's fine but you've got two levels of some you've got two levels of fear going on here you've yeah. got a, you've got a more kind of um surface level of fear which means actually i'm scared of doing this but it's not a real fear it's just you kind of speaking to yourself and then you've got another fear that's a bit more layer deep which you may have had trauma you may have had um, yeah. an experience of life that it, a positive attitude just isn't going to cut it in terms of you overcoming that particular thought about yourself or holding back from moving forward because you're scared to re um to recycle that particular incident per se so yeah. you won't move yeah. forward if you've had a trauma experience you can yeah. see yourself kind of shying away you know through yeah. moving so forward more work things. needs to be done to kind of push through that so I like the way that you broke down the kind of different layers that exist. Do you know what I mean? There's simple fears, you know, which are just kind of, you know, as they say, what is it? Fear is kind of false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. there's that kind of level of fear. And then there's actual responses to genuine fear of trauma, yeah, that people experience. So I totally no, I totally hear that. So how in terms of um the common themes that you've supported clients with? Other than kind of dealing with this fear, what kind of industries are they from? What Because I'd imagine your expertise is in personal development. So I'd imagine people come from a range of different backgrounds, right, or industries and careers. So what, what's the yeah. kind of... Yeah, so um, I would say more recently, my clientele exists of business startups, but it's more um, linked to people that have... They're already in a field, but then they want to transition that into community-based responses. So, for instance, um, one of my most recent um, uh, clients is a fashion stylist. Okay. And she wants to use fashion to help women with DV, like, that have experienced domestic violence. Okay. So she's transitioning to creating a program, a business model that will address DV through fashion and helping people to build confidence and feel better about themselves. So yeah. um, it's that kind of transition in business. So my clients will often have a field that they're kind of into and they're happy with, but they want to trash and in transition into some community element of their business. Yeah. Um, another so like a social cause or a social so kind of... Cause, yeah, so bring expertise that, that, that addresses a social problem yeah, and help yeah. to you know help society on a whole basically through their expertise yeah well so that's quite a powerful position that you put yourself in there i mean as a well as a coach it's a powerful role anyway you know because you're helping someone to effectively facilitate and find solutions to their own kind of life's problems or whatever the focus is because i know you've got coaches for different industries and different aspects of, of, of work and, and professional development and stuff so it depends but I guess for you what is the most if you used to say there was the most rewarding aspect of doing your coaching what would you say is the most rewarding aspect of your of your work and your role and what you do um, I, for me it's all about um, if I see somebody that has started with me and they've been very um, scared of their own ability because sometimes there is a fear of success as well. And I don't think people often okay. talk about that. There's a fear of success. So the minute you start to begin to be successful, you withdraw. So it's like you've got your comfort zone. You step outside it and you're heading towards success. But then the overwhelmingness of, oh, my gosh, can I really do this, makes you shrink back into your comfort zone. So for me, the most rewarding thing is when I see clients that – have come to me and they've not had the confidence to go out and, and build who they want to be. And then suddenly they're out there doing this. Like um, one of my clients had a first coaching session with a client paid client. And I thought amazing. Like she's, she's actually gone past the fear zone 
and now she's actually doing it. And that for me is um, really, really rewarding. And um, for me, I'm a community person. So yeah, tell us about I've chosen to focus on community businesses because I have a lot. I come from church background, okay? okay? I've had many positions in church with community, as in youth work, as in sitting as a vice president on different, you know, and it's followed me throughout my whole life. So anything that I can see where people are overcoming a particular barrier that should be stopping them, because we all go through things that should, in hindsight, stop us from moving forward. If I can help somebody to um, address that and move past it, and then they're now operating in a different sphere to what they thought they could, that's really yeah. rewarding to me. Okay, nice, no, brilliant. So seeing people push through fear barriers, being being the best that they can be, achieving. I like that I I like that that point that you picked up on about people's fear of success. Because I think sometimes, you know, um I think I definitely have heard people talk about how, yeah, they they've got a passion to do something or they're proud to kind of do well. We're proud of her too, Crystal. We're Thank proud you, of her too. Crystal. Do you know what I mean? Love, we're proud of her too. I've not been That's addressing funny. the comments, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, as well. I'm jumping between the two. Yeah, yeah, we're proud of you too, girl. So obviously in terms of like um, helping people to progress and to get through certain challenges and stuff as well, the idea of being success, uh, successful, I think, until people are in it, right, it becomes that thing that they aspire to have or to become successful. Once you're yeah. kind of there, you're edging towards it, there's like, wait, hold on, like a deer in the headlights. This is a bit scary. Do you get what I'm saying? And Definitely. I think imposter syndrome can set in and stuff oh, like that. 100%. And I think um, that's such an important factor, I think, that you've just mentioned about imposter syndrome because... Um, even sometimes, and, you know, I know we've got the whole um, Black Lives Matter happening at the moment, but this is something that happens to us in different walks of life. Like, I was speaking to a friend today, and I was saying, growing up, I was the only black child in my class. Um, I've been in organisations where I'm the only black person within my team. Yeah. And so <laughs> you can tend to have that imposter syndrome where you're like, I know I can do this, but actually there's something here where I just feel uneasy about pushing myself forward. And so that can happen in many different um, directions in life. And the thing is about success for different people mean different things. And that's yeah. another thing. So when I'm working with my clients, I like to understand what success means for them. Because sometimes it could be just having a better relationship. Yeah. It could be attracting better, you know when we think about relationships and finding partners and stuff like that, because here's yeah. the thing about coaching, it starts off in one sense that I could be coaching a business client and the model is about the business. But because of my coaching technique, I like to look at barriers that might stop you from progressing. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at barriers now, it's like we have to go a bit deeper because there's other things that come up throughout the whole coaching process. So you will often find um, maybe a business coach will, will could still touch on mental and emotional issues yeah. depending on the type of coach they are. But I think my clients resonate with me because I definitely um, talk in a lot of sense, preach it. Thank you, whoever, action hero teacher. Yeah, action hero teacher, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah. So, my, so my coaching will often touch on um, emotional and mental well-being as well as the business element, because I like to look at the barriers. What can stop you from getting yeah. ahead? What is it that you don't believe about yourself that can stop you? Because we know that a lot of businesses start up and then within the first two years of yeah. starting up, they don't, they, they no longer exist. So yeah. what is it why you should get ahead? What is it that you are going to do that's going to last beyond those two years that people tend to drop off by? So yeah. for me, yeah. coaching, coaching is a lot wider. It's like, you know, even discovering what is your why, what is your driving force behind what you do? Because if I don't establish what the passion is behind what you do, we live in a society where people are just jumping on everybody's idea. That looks good, so I'm going to do it. That looks good, I'm going to do it. But 
understand what your calling is, understand what your passion is, because it's only those inner passions that come from you that's going to be the driving force behind anything you do. So what is your why behind why you want to get into this build, behind what it is that you want to do? I like that idea about the why. Um, and I think, you know, um, there's been a lot of teaching around leadership, around finding your why, you know. It's not what you do or how you do it, but why. What is your motivation for doing what you're doing? And it's interesting because you're right. A lot of people are just jumping on bandwagons right now, um, looking at obviously what's happening in the States and what's happening around the world with regards to, you know, the whole Black Lives Matters movement. You know, there's some people generally down for the cause, there's some people that are jumping on a bandwagon as part of a PR bandwagon, do you know what I mean, to be a part of something. But something you said a few minutes ago um, that really connected with me, that um, resonated, that I wanted to kind of find out a bit more about and your views on it, was when you kind of described, you know, the experience of kind of working with clients, helping them to kind of push through their barriers, but also, I guess navigating spaces where your gender, your skin colour, your ethnicity it, it is up for, for, for scrutiny, right? Do you get what I'm saying? How do you navigate, particularly when you are the only black woman, the, black, the only black woman in the room, how, how do you navigate stuff like that, you know? Um, what, what are your techniques? What's your, your survival strategies? Do you know what? I, I think um, what it is, okay, so often we say that words have power, okay? Words have power and what you feed into your spirit will obviously play out on the outside. And I'll tell you another story. I was asked to speak at an event and um, at that event there was all these amazing speakers that had been in their industries for many years. Their bios were just phenomenal. And I remember sitting there and I might have been like, seventh on the list and okay. what for speaking to come up and speaking speak. yeah, yeah to come up and speak so yeah. as they're speaking and they're getting up and speaking i'm thinking wow they're just phenomenal they're amazing that imposter syndrome started to kick yeah. in yeah. Yeah. and i literally this is what i'm no word of a lie this is what i did i had to take myself outside so i removed myself went outside into the toilets in fact <laughs> and yeah. i started to say to myself to I started to speak to myself and I started to say, you are powerful. You can do this. You've got a right to be here. You need to boss up. Now's not the time to shrink. And yeah. it was like, if God is for you, who can be against you? Like That's I just started right. to feed right. all of these words of power into my life so that when I go back in, I can, because that is what happens when you get imposter syndrome or when you um, are placed in a situation where you could be a minority and that could just be in skill or it could be in ethnicity you can kind of shrink. And I always say, instead of shrinking, I need to rise. You know, yeah. I need to make a stand. I need to be seen. I need to be yeah. heard. I have a right to be here. That's when my That's boss right. starts kicking in. That's and right. then I yeah. literally am like, and I go in there and I go back in with a complete different attitude. Yeah. And then literally I go in and I'm like, there is no hierarchy in here. Yeah. I have a right to be here. I am just as valuable as anybody else in this room. And that's how I'm going to show up. So I do think your internal dialogue can either make you shy away and think, oh my gosh, I can't do this. And you start to shrink in the chair. And then when you get up, your nerves actually show through the internal dialogue that you're having. So I always say to people, look, if you take a moment to just um, have a word with yourself and talk yourself up instead of down, you can do this. And yeah. this is where I also say sometimes when you go to an event, <clears throat> you don't have family members there. You don't have representatives that can give you the thumbs up and say you're doing well. Yeah. So you that literally have to go with the power of God, with your, your power and say, do you know what? I'm going to go and make a stand. I'm going to be yeah. seen and I'm going to be heard and I have a right to be here. So that's how I kind of deal with those situations in every yeah. situation. If I enter a meeting and I'm the only black person there, it's the same, it's the same yeah the same tool that i use definitely so there's positive affirmations and obviously you're a woman of faith you're a woman of god you know and obviously that's very important in speaking that into your life and speaking positivity and i guess 
also for those that maybe not necessarily have a faith filled compass or point of yeah. reference those positive affirmations are just important right um, but obviously we're not going to downplay the power of God do you know what I mean and and his influence and how he can intercede you know and because there are many I'm sure looking at the Bible there are many 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 characters we could look to who doubted themselves and actually in fact had to kind of spend that time with God to kind of see their worth and even God organized aids to be in his presence to kind of help yeah. and advocate on behalf of people you know absolutely and I think one of my favorite things in terms of the bible and you know I know this isn't a religious talk yet but yeah, it's yeah. like there's one thing that we, I remember when I started speaking even in church and um you know there's a, a scripture that says that God doesn't um call the equipped he equips the called yeah yeah so sometimes even when you don't feel adequate enough you have to understand that you do have everything it takes even yeah, when you yeah, don't yeah. feel like you have it you absolutely can step up and yeah, represent definitely. in a way that's very powerful you know yeah yeah definitely definitely no thank you thank you for that nisha and what we're gonna do we're gonna slightly change a little pace right because we're yeah. gonna switch it up a little bit now um, and i feel that, you know, I just want to say respect to everybody there because I've been seeing the comments coming up. People, I love, oh my, no, don't choke now, Alicia, you know, I need you. <laughs> yeah, you got your water, cool. So everybody's just been, I think you've been just dropping, not I think, I know, you've been dropping some, some pearls and some gems because it's really resonated for people. People have been just dropping some bars back in support of what you're saying as well. And just to kind of move up the pace a little, um, what I'm going to do is going to be a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you, yeah? I don't want you to think too much, yeah? It's just a quick fire round. Um, I just want to grab your opinion on a few things, yeah? And you just simply just answer whatever I ask you, yeah? It's cool, all right? Don't I, worry. No, I'll try and keep it light, because you know I, I tend to go deep with everything. It's just my nature, so I'll it's try and keep good. it a bit lighter. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, it's thumbs up. All right, all good. You'll be cool. Okay, so nice and easy. Give me your top three inspiring YouTube channels that you're currently watching or you subscribe to. Gosh, I'm not really much on YouTube, but I do tend to watch, um, I tend to watch anything that is educational in terms of business. Okay. So. I'm in a place where I'm expanding on business because obviously, you know, I've entered the competition and looking yeah. at different ways to make money. So I tend to go on um, platforms that and, and look at different ways to create income streams and so forth. But okay. I don't have any five to actually tell you, but I always look okay. at business channels. So you don't, so you don't have a particular channel that you subscribe to religiously or watch that you feel is pretty good for the, um, for the stuff that they bring or the gems that they share, no? No, I just I just go on random channels. <laughs> That's I'm cool. like that. I just cool. yeah. That's but, cool. um, okay. um, YouTube isn't like a main platform that I spend a lot of time on, and that's probably why. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Well, give me three books then that saved your life. If there were three books that you said that you've read over the course of your lifetime that were really important and instrumental to you, what would those three books be? So obviously, the first one I'm going to mention is the Bible. You know yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. The second one, I mean, the book that I absolutely love with a lot of gems and tools and stuff is um, Seven Habits of Highly Eff uh, Effective People by Stephen Covey. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I've got a few here. And The Power of Now. Okay, okay. So the Stephen Covey and <laughs> Seven... Habits of highly successful people, yeah? Yeah. Right? Obviously, the Bible and the, the power of now. Who's the author behind the power of now? Um, Eckhart Tolle. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. And we do this because, obviously, we want people, as much as they're learning from us having this conversation, we also... This is all about learning and imparting knowledge, right? And sharing that. So whatever pearls of wisdom that you've had that's worked for you from whatever you've read, whatever you've watched, obviously could inspire other people because people are at different journeys. So we're hoping that people can take some stuff from this as well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. With, with, so, the, um, how, with the power of now, I just have to mention, anybody that spends a lot of time thinking too futuristic or too much into the past, 
<clears throat> it's, it's really such a great book because it allows you to be present. And sometimes okay. we miss the enjoyment of life now because we're looking too far into the future or we're looking too back into the past and we, yeah. we lose out of the enjoyment of now. And yeah. I know yeah. that I'm guilty of that. So I think that book was really instrumental to me to just like, let go, let go. Just enjoy what's happening yeah. right now in this yeah. time. Be present. So, so being really present to now, like a bit like how we talk about like mindfulness and being kind of present to now. And because we do, I think we can be become very obsessed with the future or yeah, delve too much in the past, which could be our fear, right? But definitely yeah. cool. No, thank you for that. Okay, so three films that you have to watch before you die. If there were three films that you'd recommend that everyone needs to see before they leave this earth and go oh to where they're going. You are asking me questions on things that I, I'm not really a film person either. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just not. Um, I can see you pulling your hair, girl. Right. Yeah, like <laughs> this is one of the questions that you have. To, you should have sent to me before, so I could have pre pre prepared. Because yeah, I'm actually that's... not a film person, but there are a couple of them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a couple of films, but I just don't remember the titles of them. But okay. Yeah. Skip. Okay, so there's there's a couple of films, but you don't know for sure. You go on up. You're terrible. <laughs> You're terrible. Okay. Okay. All right then. Then, do you watch, do you have Netflix? Do you watch Netflix? I don't. You watch, wow. See, this look, is deep. All my friends are on here sending laughing signs because they know. <laughs> and I am known for not knowing what films are. I, I am in a different lane. I don't spend time watching um, films and TV and stuff like that. I just yeah. spend time on building my craft. That's what I do. That's what I enjoy. Yeah. So, unfortunately... Um, during lockdown, a lot of people has been, you know, catching up on series and films and stuff. And I haven't. I've yeah. just been, I've been on lockdown yeah. working on business because I've got multiple things happening. Yeah. So then, I what? Mean, do, okay, let's switch it then, because everyone's like, we. I'm hearing people. We stay in our lane. That's why we win. That's we my don't friend. That's the, watch that is my friend. <laughs> Right. You know, we someone else that that they only got Netflix a few months ago. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be able to stand in your lane and I mean yeah. the questions that you're asking me is an assumption that everybody does these things not no disrespect I'm not trying to yeah <laughs> you know yeah. But the questions that you're asking me are quite um general in terms of you, there's an assumption that everybody engages in this and yeah. unfortunately yeah. those questions are not relevant to me because okay. I don't spend a lot of time on um tv and stuff you know totally then what do you do so when it's not tv what is your downtime because I appreciate um, for me, I think just to add to the people that are talking about staying in their lane, I wanna add. I wanna add to this for people to think about. You know, we win, 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 and we grind, grind, grind. But we also need to have that balance. So, depending, I know some people who use um, Netflix and some of these things to just break up the day. It's just Absolutely. something. To there's, there's nothing that wrong with that. I'm, yeah, I'm, with. I'm not. I'm yeah, not yeah, ever yeah. saying that people should not watch TV and films and stuff like that. That's not yeah. what I'm saying. It's just something that I don't do. So yeah, 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 um, yeah. for downtime, I'd much rather read a book. Okay. Um, I'd much rather have conversations, like real conversations with people, because those are things that I don't always have time to do because of how busy I yeah. am. So my downtime is having a really good catch up with someone, having a good, you know, okay. checking in on people, yeah. having laughter on the phone yeah. and you yeah. know let, you know just kind of being free with your honesty yeah. and yeah. thoughts and stuff so i like that yeah, and yeah. i would obviously read books and stuff like that that's how i find my enjoyment yeah the so relationships are very important yeah to you and talking and communication is key which is great i mean that's cool because i think what you some people have put up in there that you know niche is just uh, niche is old just school. old school and it's so yeah, true anyone saying. that knows me i, I am very yeah. much an old soul so what, what is old school then? What does that mean in summary for you then? Because I guess that would mean different things for different people. But what does that mean for you, old school, when that's applied to you? Um, I think that I'm very... There's traditional elements about me that, that are probably not current ways that people would automatically um, be drawn to. Do you know what I mean? So 
I know this is a little bit outside the box, but let's say dating. Yeah. If I was okay. going to date, online dating isn't my thing. I'd much rather be old school and meet somebody in person. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So that's okay. just the only, I'm just using that as an illustration to, I am old school with well, some things, so. Okay. Why not online, just out of interest? What's, what's the, you just open up a can of worms if you, what, what's that? Why did I <laughs> use that as an illustration? It's the only one I could think of in the moment. Well, I um, guess, so, yeah, yeah. So with the online dating thing, just out of interest, you know, sticking with this old school thing, why would that be, as that's a bit kind of a, because people are meeting their husbands and wives online, do you know what And I that's mean? absolutely yeah. fine. Again, yeah, yeah, I think that yeah, yeah, yeah. anything that I'm saying on here is relative to me. And yeah, I, respect, I respect that other people have their ways and it's worked for them. I yeah. think for me, um, I am much of a vibesy person. Okay. So if there's a barrier between me catching your vibe, it's not really the best way for me to interact so to speak because i can write people off just for them saying something you know whereas okay. if i meet people in person and i can catch their vibe it's like a spirit thing in it your spirit is drawn to yeah. somebody it's that whole type of thing so i'm i'm a bit um but that's because men flock to her doesn't need it, it. you got it is that how you got it nisha no, tell us more <laughs> hey, tell us a bit more i didn't men flock to her how it, many of them flock not, to her? i mean <laughs> No, you should stay out of this. How often do they flock? <laughs> let's get back to the question. Let's not focus on that. So the question is, is that I like to vibe with people in real life. So I'm yeah. a little bit um, old school in that sense. So yeah. that was just me giving an illustration. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's funny that you say that because I was going to put a question to you, actually. And it's on the theme of dating, actually. Right. So seeing as that you're a personal development coach, right, let's assume... Yeah. Yeah, let's assume that um, I was somebody that had somewhat of an issue with dating, yeah? Right, I'm someone who's a bit shy, a bit nervous, don't really have much confidence when it comes to, you know, I'm that online kind of dating type of person. How would you, as my coach, as my coach, yeah, coaching me through this and getting me ready, how, what would you be taking me through to um, prepare me for um, my dating kind of scenarios? Okay. So, yeah. okay, so if I was a coach and I was looking at somebody that was potentially, you just described them as not having confidence and so forth, mm -hmm. what I would say to them is I would want to work with them before they go into trying to date. And I'll okay. tell you why, because there's almost like a mirror of um, how you feel about yourself to what you attract. And yeah. all right, people may or may not agree with this, but in my experience, how you feel about yourself can often mirror the type of person you're going to attract so if you're not feeling confident and you've got a lot of insecurities and so forth it's probably mm -hmm. not the best time for you today so if you were my client i would yeah. probably say to you let me work with you for a little bit and you know let's discover some of those internal barriers that you're experiencing and then okay. when you do go out into the dating world you'll be in a much better position to know exactly what you're attracting who you're attracting why you're attracting them and whether they okay. fit your values so now you're going to make me go into values and all sorts. Start. You've recognised that, obviously, I've got an issue, yeah, with um, the confidence thing. So what you'd yeah. be identifying is what's those kind of, um, those lies that I'm telling myself, those kind of, those those barriers and stuff, yeah? Am I correct in saying that? You'd start yeah, to work. Yeah, so, so it would be like, like if you lack confidence, what is it that's made you, has something happened that's, that, was there a point in your life that you did have confidence? And at what point was that disrupted? Because when you understand what point that was disrupted, you can now start to recover from yeah. how you build confidence. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there must have been some kind of disruption that made you, you know, because we all kind of grow up innocent, don't we? We grow up innocent. Mm -hmm. We don't have all these barriers. But there's sometimes interjections that happen that cause us to then think about, why am I not confident? Why am, am I insecure? What's not the confidence? What's chipped? at my confidence because once I know that I can build from it you know because sometimes again that that could be um situations that you've experienced and you can get past them but you just don't know how to so you think that's your new narrative when actually it, it doesn't need to be and we see it all the time I mean how many people do we see going that. into relationships kind of moving on into relationships when they have those insecurities and maybe find feeling secure through someone else, if that makes sense. You know, you kind of enter a relationship because it allows you to feel more whole or more 
or more kind of um, complete, so to speak. And people do that as part of their behaviours. We see it a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so I always think that, you know, the best place to operate from is when you have your self-love and you're feeling amazing about yourself because yeah. a lot of the time you will attract somebody that also feels amazing about themselves and then you add to each other. But if you're looking yeah. for happiness yeah. from somebody again, it means you're taking away your personal power because if they say jump, you say how high. If they say feel low, you feel low. You have to understand who you are before you then enter into a yeah. scenario that can either enhance you or take away from you, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I think, and I get it because as a coach, I think that's something, I mean, as we're speaking, that's something that I think is very common for us because to coach, to mentor you've got to have a level of introspection and reflection. You've got to be able to reflect on yourself. But I don't think it's very common, to be fair, for the average person. I don't think um, everyone naturally has that. But I, I do totally appreciate, you know, the sentiment. Yeah. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. To, just to end that, I think that an important point to just note is that we all have core values that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that are what govern the decisions that we make and that govern how we move forward but what i believe is that some people don't explore those core values so when you meet somebody you will obviously you you can base your decisions just on have they got money have they got a car have they got yeah. a house all the superficial yeah. things but underneath yeah. that yeah. Yeah. inherently what actually sustains your relationship is going to be the core values that meet and match so you can con yourself into thinking you're the same just because they've got these materials and once problems start to flag up, you realise actually a core value might be integrity. They have none. Yeah. So yeah. understanding your core values and what you believe, that's what you primarily should be looking for. And then the other things are secondary. I'm not saying, you know, you sh those things are not important, but I'm saying that there's a structure to that. So primarily you're looking at your core values. Do they match? Secondary, do they have the job, the house, the car and all the other good stuff? So it's I, I believe because, there's an order to that, yeah. you know. But for like you said, to be honest with you, their core values may be focused on those superficial materialistic things. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people, that would be a part of their kind of core um, values or what they strive for and what they want and need. These, you know, he or she has to match me on this level or whatever or must have this. And I'm it's sad, but yeah, yeah, unfortunately. The thing is, I think it's needed. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that that shouldn't exist. But what I am saying is characteristics first. Characteristic, mm. do you have similar beliefs, values, philosophies of life? Do you mirror in those things first? Because the material things will come, they might go, who knows? But mm. what's going to sustain is your core beliefs and how you do life and do you match on some things. You're not going to match on absolutely yeah. everything, but... They yeah, are important, yeah. so... Of course they are. Yeah, they are. It's all important. And I guess, as you said before... You know, as you're speaking, this is what's relative to yourself. Other people have their own belief systems, their frame of reference, you know, their benchmarks. It will look very different for everyone else. But I'm hoping that this has provided a small peak of possibility for other people, do you know what I mean, in their lives and what is possible for them. And has given people another kind of, yeah, another reference point to kind of consider as part of this process, yeah? So, Nisha, if people... Um, want to get in touch with you even though they're kind of listening now how can people holler at you you know um in terms of coaching what's the best way to get in touch with you um you can email me at nisha t um obviously we're on this platform which is instagram so mm -hmm. you can inbox me or um contact mm -hmm. me from insta follow me um i'm also on facebook which i don't use that much but yeah the main, I, I think the main way is through um, my website by emailing okay. me. Right, email. Okay, brilliant, cool. And if there were three people, how, by the way, how are you feeling? Are you all right? You, you, we're coming towards you and you've survived. How are you feeling? You good? I survived, Kevin, because <laughs> I know I, I, I literally was like, Kevin can be so random. I've seen your <laughs> interviews. Terrible. So I've checked me out and researched how I interview people. But it's been cool, right? This has been all right for you in terms of- Yeah, it's of been good, it's been good, yeah. yeah. And I hope well, everyone we else- We do our research, yeah. don't we? Nobody, I mean, well, I always do research before I yeah. enter into these situations and I think it's important. You, 
You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Some people don't often do that. You'd be surprised. You know, some people go headlong in and they're like, <gasps> do you know what I mean? They're in the headlights. But yeah, I wanted to ask you just finally finishing up. If there were three people that could come onto our platform to have a conversation um, like this, obviously it will be via our kind of five minutes to disrupt format um, for now until we're out of lockdown and out of the restrictions. Who would be the three people that you would recommend to come into the lounge and why? Um, so I feel like I have a lot of powerful women around me. So... Yeah. You know, I'm all about the sisterhood. No disrespect, guys. I love you and all that. Um, yeah. But one person would be um, another personal development coach, Bianca okay. Boyce. She's probably okay. on him. She's phenomenal in corporate coaching and yeah. transitioning from your nine to five into business. She's phenomenal. Um, I have Sherry Johnson. She's done amazing things. She's just... Um, Got, I think it's sheltered housing for women or she's she, there's a lot of okay. things that she's done but she's brilliant she'll be someone that I think would be really beneficial okay. to interview and especially in terms of culture she's got a fantastic story and she's done amazing as well um and lastly um who, okay I just spoke to Paula Perry and I think Paula Perry's really good she's like a financial she deals with black okay. um financial she's a financial educator yeah, yeah. So she helps people on how to um, interrupt their financial norms and create better financial ways to sustain um, okay. increase and, you know, social mobility and so forth. So Okay, cool. So three very powerful women in the world of finance, kind of community, coaching within the corporate industries as well. So that's brilliant. So thank you for that. Thank you for dropping You're those welcome. bars and stuff. And finally, is there anything, if there was like a part in the message that you wanted to give to anybody listening in on our conversation right now, what would be your part in piece of wisdom or knowledge that you would, you would share? I would say that um, to go for what you really want and don't compromise on that. Mm. Um, really just believe in your own ability to succeed. And if you need help, just don't be scared to ask for help. Don't yeah. be scared to reach out to somebody and know your limitations. We all have them. So really just to just never compromise on what it is that you want to succeed in or what you want out of your own life or the legacy you want to leave. Just don't compromise. Go for it. Go do you. Pursue your goals and stuff. Definitely. Well, thank you, Nisha. Thank you for your time. It's gone You're quick. No. It's gone quick. Trust me. We've been chatting away. when you're having fun. It does, it does, it does indeed. But yeah, and if, like Nisha said, you know, um, connect with Nisha, we encourage you to do so. If um, there's anybody else as well out there that's listening in that feel would really benefit or know somebody who might be very much interested in sitting here and having a conversation and talking through stuff, talking about their work, talking about things that you're passionate about. Maybe it's a business maybe it's about an area of your life you're extremely kind of passionate about and sharing that could help other people make sure that you kind of tune in and hit us up in yeah inbox us um hit us up and let's talk thank about you. it thank yeah. you do you know thank what i mean you, someone's just joining now you're is it, is it people joining us? <laughs> but thank you to everyone that's joined Chante, yeah. crystal yeah Bianca, Sherry. i see a lot of people joining in my sister and oh, people wow. that I don't know as well that have joined <laughs> yeah. in today. I hope yeah. you found it really helpful. And um, Kevin, thank you for no, having me you. on the show as well. No. Thank you, Yazzie. Is it Yazzie yeah. or Jazzy? No, Yaz. I think it's Yaz. Yaz, Yaz. Yaz. thank yeah. you, Yaz. It's been um, amazing being on your platform. So thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. It's been emotional. It's been great. Nisha, till next time, yeah? We're going to have you back, you know? We've got to have you back. Do a proper, like, revisit an aspect of coaching and look into that. I like the dating stuff. I like it. But, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that, yeah? Thank yeah. you, Nisha. Yeah? Take care. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.